I'm sure you've heard of DMART and what a large company it is, but if Reliance Retail would have demerged and listed on the stock market, it would be five times greater than DMART itself. It would be worth 7 lakh crores. I mean, let's look at all of the peers over here. You'll notice Avenue Supermarket, which is DMART, with a PE of 93 is around 2 lakh crore rupees. You'll notice now, if we imagine Reliance Retail to demerge from Reliance and become a separate entity, what would that be? Well, we can see here that it did a revenue of 2.6 lakh crores. We can see that the profit was 9,181 crores. Now, if I apply a PE of 80 to the earnings of 9,181, we will get 7.3 lakh crore. That is what, five times the size of DMART. Now you'll be surprised to know that Reliance Retail has done some crazy things in the retail space. And in this video, we're gonna decode how the hell did it do that. Now, before we talk about Reliance Retail K Financials, let's understand the industry a bit, right? So the retail Indian industry is $800 billion. And let's segment this into two parts. On one side, we have the organized sector, nice escalators, nice mall, the supermarkets, someone saying, hello, madam, when you enter it, or sir, some nice places for you to shop beautiful galleries and on the other side you have the unorganized sector which are you know the mom and pop shops the kirana stores but as you might have guessed the unorganized sector the kirana stores is where the actual value is 90 percent of all retail happens here and not in malls in fact apart from 90 percent of the retail market it actually contributes 10 percent of the gdp of the country and employs eight percent of the entire workforce imagine if we were able to create a better retail experience for the consumer for india for the actual suppliers and the employees couldn't this sector be something that's very powerful for the country Reliance Retail is not only offline, it's also online. It has 56,000 Kiranas through its GeoMart platform. Now, if you think about the country, 56,000 Kirana stores is not a lot, especially considering Reliance, who wants to work with everybody. So I'm sure there's a long way to go there. Now, Reliance knows that this is a large opportunity, and it also knows that turning this unorganized into organized is where the operations and opportunity lies. So let's go back a little bit. They, over the last few years, have been acquiring a lot of companies so that they can work with the unorganized sector and actually sell through the organized sector. These are all the companies they've actually worked with and acquired. Their journey started way back in 2006 with Reliance Fresh in Hyderabad. And after that, they spent $1.46 billion, which is probably pocket change for Motorbuy for all these acquisitions. Out of all of these acquisitions that Reliance has made, these two guys, Hamleys and Metro, are the ones I wanted to talk about. Now, Hamleys is a toy maker and a toy distributor. It sells toys to children. Well, actually to parents who want to make their children happier. And the toy industry in India is only about 0.5% of the global $170 billion global toy industry. Now, what's interesting here is, think about India's demographic. It's a young population. People are yet to be married and children are yet to be born. And of course, the income levels of New India is growing at an unprecedented rate. Think about how much your Dadaji used to earn versus how much you may earn over the next five years. Huge, huge difference. Because of that disposable income, which means income you can actually spend, parents will spend on their children. About 25 million children are born every year. This will only increase over the next few years and so will the disposable income. This means they're trying to dominate this industry even before it's even there which means they are thinking long term, not surprising. Then look at Metro. This is Metro and Metro is in the B2B space. So a small Kirana store, this is my drawing of a small Kirana store, has to source all of what it's selling. It could be stationery, could be bottles of Pepsi or Coke or other soft drinks, could be biscuits, etc. It has to come from somewhere. Now, do you think this person will go to 100 different factories and buy it or talk to 25 different distributors and buy it? 
perhaps. But what if you could go to one place which has economies of scale because a metro will work with all distributors and perhaps directly with the manufacturer to get the best prices. And since they're buying everything for perhaps that entire city, at least for all the Kirana stores, they get the best prices. These Kirana stores then basically become customers of Metro. Actually, I used to go to school in Malaysia and we didn't have a bus. A friend's father used to drop me. His son used to go to the same school. He used to run a small little cafe in Malaysia and we would go to a Metro equivalent back there. I think it was called Tesco. And he would drive and he would shop everything from that place. And I would say, you're buying cheese, you're buying all these ingredients, you can buy from a supermarket. Why are you buying it from here? He says, well, it's cheaper. And everything was 30% cheaper than a normal supermarket. So I asked him, why can't I shop from here? He said, well, only small businesses can. And we've done a video on MSMEs and that sector. You should check that video out. But my point is very simple. If you have a large enough metro in a small city, all the Kirana stores will buy from that one spot because it's more affordable. Now, they've actually organized the Kirana stores by making them the customer. Metro has 31 stores in 21 cities and they're catering to 3 million customers. Remember, these are not 3 million individuals. These are perhaps close to 3 million small businesses. And I think that's very interesting. Then when you go down the pipe, you have small businesses over here as well who are talking to B2C customers directly. So think about Milk Basket, think about Hamleys. They're talking and selling to the customer directly. This is also something that Reliance owns. Isn't that interesting? From wholesale to retail, that's what Reliance is covering. Another interesting thing about this entire angle is that it's not only B2C mass market. It's also Reliance retail for the ultra rich. So when you think about Manish Malhotra, Abu Jani, Sandeep Khosla, Ritu Kumar, and even other brands like Louis Vuitton and Kate Spade and Tiffany and Hugo Boss, they go, we don't shop at such places, but I know there are rich people who go and buy stuff from here. They own all of these stores. Now let's look at the financials. They go both simple. Hai. Reliance retail or any retail outlet has very low margins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5%. I have spoken to my supermarket guy. I asked him, when I'm buying this, how much do you make from this bag of Lay's or whatever he sells? It's always a few percentage points. So how much will you earn? Let's see. Over here, I can see FY22 and FY23. Gross revenue is almost 2 lakh crores to 2.6 lakh crores. That's massive. That's a 19.4% increase in top line. That's amazing for a company of that size. But of course, GMV could be high. Um, the money won't be that high, right? Let's see what that looks like. Revenue from operations and we have EBITDA. Let's look at that, right? The EBITDA is 10,900 crores versus 17,600 crores. That's a 33% increase. That is actually really decent growth. 33% growth on EBITDA from operations is, is, is really high. Then EBITDA itself has also grown 32%, which means it's gone from 12,000 crores to 17,900 crores. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. We can also see net profit is 7,000 crores versus 9,000 crores. That's little more than a billion dollars. So it's clear that the growth happening over here, at least in the last 2022 to 2023 hasn't pretty steady. But you know, remember your first salary versus your last salary? It must have increased, but you're still a little unhappy. It's very similar for Mukesh Ambani. When Mukesh Ambani sees this and he looks at his refinery business, he says, kuch bhi paisa nahi hai. <laughs> Ye kya hai? Because the refinery business does this much crores and Reliance Retail does this much crores. Human nature, different level. A large part of the revenue that you see, the driver has been, what, 18% has come from Geomart. Now, Geomart is their online service where they try to do distribution and they've partnered many, many stores in 250 cities. They even have an app, you can order stuff from there, and the groceries business is doing decently well. Especially because it's online, the digital acquisition is good. Well, because you're using a GeoSim, so they can talk to you. You're probably on GeoCinema, so they can show you ads. And I asked around, I know five people in the office who've used this service to order something once. I don't know how the service is, but distribution, they have. They also run this fashion portal called Agio. 
I have never used it, but it competes with the likes of Mintra, Flipkart, Amazon, and Tata Click. And the Ambani's don't plan to stop. They have started a new segment, a new industry within retail, which competes against Nike. It's called Tira. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And this is what the industry looks like. You have cosmetics, fra fragrances, skincare, and personal care. You can see the growth there is steady, and they've entered this market as well. They've also brought back Sheen, the fast fashion retailer that took the world by storm with how much money it's making. So they are actually partnering 25,000 small businesses in this country and hopefully it should create an export opportunity of 50,000 crores. Remember, all of this is under one company, Reliance Retail. Holy shit! The interesting thing is this, that the retail industry, Reliance or no Reliance, in general, is doing extremely well in the country. The planets seem to align. You have disposable income. You have a young population which has great opportunities. You also have people who want to spend. I think we all borrow the best and worst from abroad. We think about consumerism. We want to own more, th more things. We consume Instagram. We're constantly being sold things and we listen to it. We want to consume. Unless that changes, the Indian retail industry might hit this 1.8 trillion I'm seeing over here, according to this report, in 2030. The question is this though, will it be four or five companies which own the entire retail industry? Or is it just gonna be one company? I surely don't have the answer, but we have something happening over here. I'd love to know what you think. Put it in the comments below. I'd also like to understand who do you think can compete against Reliance Retail? Do you think it's DMART? Do you think the Tatas will come up with something? It is an open market after all. And they're not the only guys with distribution. There are other business houses as well. I'd love to know what you think. Now, Ambani's businesses aren't stopping. They're launching a new business feels like almost every week. But they go, we have only one channel and we're doing business case studies. If you like this business case study, give a like right now. Hit the subscribe button and write something in the comments and tell us whether we should do more business case studies like this. But please remember, if you don't hit that subscribe button or that like button, we will not get feedback from you and we won't be able to come back with more case studies like this. So please write something in the comments as well and see you in the next video.